President of South Africa Cyril, Cyril Ramaphosa is currently on a trip to the United States of America to meet with President Joe Biden. I saw that he met with Kamala Harris as well. They're going to be strengthening the relationships between the two countries. Uh, I believe the United States of America is our third biggest trade partner globally. Um, so it is important, of course, as president of the country and as leader of this country to go and strengthen the relationships. Unfortunately, I don't like Cyril Ramaphosa, nor do I like Joe Biden uh, as well. But this is important presidential work that needs to be done. One of the things that is upsetting South Africans is the fact that America was one of the countries that was involved in giving South Africa, I think it's $8.5 billion, $8.5 billion to get South Africa to slowly wean off um, the fossil fuels that we use. In particular, the, the bulk of our energy is uh, coal. Yet the European countries are still importing our coal en masse. And the Americas of this world themselves have not made a concerted, concerted effort to go into alternative e uh, energy. And yet they're pushing us to do that, knowing that we have so much coal. I think the coal that we have in this country will last us 400 years you know, before it's depleted and we're being pushed to get off it. And Cyril Ramaphosa is one of the people that has been the voice of alternative energy and pushing us off. There's a lot of people pushing for green, but a lot of South Africans who are in the know when it comes to energy are saying they don't agree with this notion and they're saying it's hypocritical for Europe, for the Americas, to want us to get off coal when they are not doing it currently. Cyril will be going as well along with the Brazilian president and other dignitaries to the funeral of the late Queen Elizabeth, uh, who passed away. And one of the articles that came out was saying that uh, South Africans are demanding a public holiday on Monday to, uh, to commemorate the passing of Queen Elizabeth. And people on Twitter were very upset, saying, which South Africans are these? Don't fucking lie about us. We, we are not interested. Uh, South Africans say that they want their diamonds back, their gold back that were taken by the British royal family. The British royal family that's come up um, currently has control or influence or owns over 6.6 .6 billion acres of land around the world, which is arguably a sixth of the land surface or the earth's surface. Got me thinking about the Zulu kingdom uh, within Gonyama Trust, which has close to 3 million hectares uh, of land in this country, in a country of 122 million uh, hectares of land. 3 million hectares are under the Zulu kingdom and obviously about 15% just in total of the total South African land, uh, land is under tribal uh, or king um, custodianship uh, in this country. What is being done with that land? We know that Royal Buffalo King Holdings is obviously doing amazing work. We're not too sure about some of the other uh, tribal leaders. But last I checked, uh, 180 million rand is how much Ngonyama Trust was making and leasing some of the land uh, that they have uh, under their custodianship. Obviously, not just to Zulu people, um, but to a whole lot of other business people uh, in KZN and, and abroad as well. We'll see how things go. I just thought I'd report on the Cyril and his trip in the USA. Uh, I thought I'd report on the fact that he's going to be going to the funeral of Queen Elizabeth. He's the only African leader that has been invited uh, to that. And one of two leaders from BRICS. That's why I mentioned the Brazilian president who have been invited as well. I don't know if that is telling that Cyril is in line with what the royal uh, family in the United Kingdom uh, wants from a, an African leader. We don't know if he's representing South Africa in the way that, in particular, the, the masses of South Africans feel. And some people are angry because load shedding has been horrendous this past week. And this weekend, I think we've moved up to stage five. And the fact that Cyril is enjoying his time elsewhere in the world with full electricity while he's left people like Andre de Reiter, the CEO of ESCOM, obviously Praveen Kordan, the minister of SOEs, and that he is not paying too much attention of our own problems in this country and is more focused on the West, you know, and maybe the Commonwealth as well. Today's World Cleanup Day. I went and I cleaned up thanks to, thanks to the leadership of my ward councillor under Ward 88, Nicolene Jonker. Um, she got us to clean up one of the parks around Montgomery Park in Johannesburg. So I was there with my mother, Mamsi, doing a bit of work. I posted a few videos from that. And uh, a, a friend and a brother of mine now, Tutuzani Zuma, along with uh, Uzi Pongklongo and another friend, Ryan, um, sent a video back telling me about some of the work they were doing in Newlands, you know, fixing um, a field at one of the schools there so that it can be revived as a soccer field, which it was, which it was before. 
I thought that was pretty cool. And it's not just a challenge to me to carry on doing work uh, on the ground, but it's a challenge to all of us. You know, Afri Forum does a lot of good work, uh, basic service delivery with the money that they collect. Um, and I'm hoping to see more people putting their hands up to clean up where they may be. Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda, has a day either in the month or in the week where he gets people to stop everything they're doing and to clean up where they are. I think for those of you who haven't cleaned up today, this is your opportunity and, your, and the message from me to you to say clean up could be your home, could be your yard. If you can go out into the community and pick up papers, pick up some rubbish. Yes, we pay tax. Yes, there are people that get paid to do the cleaning up. Yes, it's annoying. Sorry. Yes, it's annoying to be doing work that people already get paid for. But it's not enough to just turn a blind eye when we can do a little bit. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. If you have an hour to spare, go and clean up. Go and clean up your community and make it a better place. Shout out to Sizu Shomo as well. I saw that in partnership with APSA that they are, have been cleaning up, uh, I think, the Joburg City as well. It's World Cleanup Day today. Take 10 minutes, take 15, take 30 minutes and clean up the area around you. Pen you all the black pen. I'll chat to you guys very, very soon. Have a blessed weekend and good luck with the load shedding. I saw that Boos is trending on Twitter and someone said if Boos is trending, it probably has something to do with ESCOM and load shedding. I hope that our politicians, I hope that our public servants are going to pull up their socks and do a better job in running this country. It can't be that we keep whining when you guys are getting paid for work that you're not doing. Andre Dereta, Praveen Kordan, Cyril Ramaphosa, the entire team that is running ESCOM, everyone who works at ESCOM and everyone who pays tax and does work in this country. Guys, we need to be held accountable and we need to do better work. Some people are destroying this country under our noses and we're doing nothing about it. And maybe it is time for a different type of leadership that cares about this country. Brian Molife and Matsila Koko had stopped load shedding when they were in power and they were removed. Today we're complaining and those people are still not back and they're still alive and they're willing to serve. Brian Molife has had his assets frozen and asked to pay back pension money from the Zondo Commission. Matsila Koko is currently doing work in Zimbabwe, providing energy for them there. We've got great leaders in this country and we need to use them and we need to start looking into merit and not cater deployment. Pen you on the black pen. I'm out.